all 15 degrees today. And around the edge of our listening area, Geelong and District 17, Bendigo 15, Horsham 18. The Weather Bureau with us on the program after half past nine. Last week we were talking with Deborah Tranter, the, uh, the founder of Oscars Law, and she was responding to the draft code for puppy farming essentially and Deborah Tranter was less than impressed with what is in the draft code. Uh, in fact she was uh, she was very dismissive of some of the bits and pieces that are in there. We'll hear from Peter Walsh, we'll talk to Peter Walsh in, uh, in just a moment but first up here's a, a reminder of some of the things that Deb Tranter said to us. Now this is not toughening up the laws at all. It, it, it's, uh, animals are still going to suffer. Last week we negotiated the surrender of 30 little dogs from a puppy factory in northern Victoria. The day before we went in, a council ranger declared those dogs happy and healthy during his inspection. Our vet bill at the moment stands at $13,600 for those little dogs. Two days ago, I found out that 22 dogs were shot at a puppy farm in Gippsland. And these were little cavaliers and, and little poops that were led out of their cage down to the back of the puppy farm and they were shot and kicked into a pit. This is a brutal, brutal industry. Um, and Peter Walsh's track record on animal welfare is just abhorrent. It is just, he is hopeless. He has no idea what animal welfare is. He is viewing this through the eyes of animal management. That's Deborah Tranter last week labelling the, uh, the State Minister for Agriculture and Food Security, Peter Walsh, as hopeless, saying that he has no idea about this. Peter Walsh is the Minister for Agriculture and he's with us this morning. Minister, good morning. Good morning, sir. Harsh words against you. Your, your response to the accusation that on this issue you're hopeless. Well, I obviously don't agree at all. I think as a government we've done more in this area than as any other previous government has ever done uh, and we'll continue to do things. Deb has a very, is a very passionate about this particular issue and accept that, uh, but in some cases she's not or she's letting the emotion get in the way of the actual facts. Uh, a number of the claims that were made on your program uh, were not actually totally correct. And I suppose the key thing is that Deb was actually part of the reference group that developed this. My understanding is that she never actually made a formal submission as part of that process and didn't have a lot to say during the meetings. Okay. Um, you say there were inaccuracies in what she said. One of the, one of the uh, uh, areas she did concentrate on was about the staff-to-dog ratio. Uh, she was saying you could have one staff member for up to, uh, to four to five hundred dogs uh, if, you, uh, if you look at the total number of animals there. Is that right or wrong? Uh, that is wrong. You know, the, the, the staff ratios that are put in the draft code uh, so remember this has been through a very detailed process, it went out for public consultation, there has been feedback, it's been rewritten and it's now out for the mandatory 28 day public consultation. Uh, people have to the 14th of August to, to make responses to it. Uh, you're not going to have one staff member per hundreds of dogs, that is not the ratio that's in the code. What is the ratio? Uh, I just got a... That is a very good question. I had it here in front of me a minute ago, Steve, and I've lost it. <laughs> so it happens to me uh, occasionally. Uh, so the so current draft has a staff ratio of 1 to 25. 1 to 25 dogs? Does that include puppies, or is that breeding dogs only? Uh, that is for dogs, and if they've got a litter under four months of age, they're counted as one dog. They are counted as, as one dog as well. Yeah. So one, 1 to 25 yeah. is, the, uh, is the thing. And, and, and in the code, there's... there's the need for vets to come in. There was a discussion about the fact that I think there was claims made that dogs are going to be bred till they die. That, that is not correct. Mm -hmm. There is actually uh, six six litters per dog. There has to be a vet to check after each litter. There, it is it is quite detailed what's in the code. It's about 58 pages long. Okay. And I think before people criticise it, they should actually read it uh, because you Equally, there is people on the other side of the debate that say we're actually being too strict. Uh, I've had a lot of discussion uh, with the farm working dog people who believed it was far too far too strict for what they do. So there is in the, these sorts of debates, Steve, there is always a middle ground. I think we need to be sensible uh, that that there will be a, a need for people that want to buy pets in the future, and there's a need to make sure that those breeding establishments that breed them are managed correctly, that the animal welfare issues are addressed. And I totally reject Deb's view that we don't care about animal welfare. Right. As a government, I think we've done more 
in this area than any any previous government. Is it correct or incorrect that if you uh, want to you operate a puppy farm and you need to euthanize one of the dogs that you're able to uh, shoot the dog? or perhaps hit it over the head uh, with a hammer, blunt force trauma. Is that acceptable under this draft code, or must it be uh, euthanized by, uh, by a vet? It has to be done humanely. Which could be hitting over the head with a hammer? Well, it has to be done humanely so that the dog does not suffer. So shooting would be all right? Is that considered humane, Do you, uh, yeah, is yes, your understanding? If, if it's done appropriately, yes, it would be. Okay. And it needs to be done, obviously, where it's away from the sight of other animals. All right. Is blunt force trauma considered to be a humane way of putting down animals? If it's done appropriately. And again, it needs to be done away from the sight of other, other animals so, so other animals aren't stressed by the sight of it happening. Do you think the majority of people would think that is acceptable? I think the majority of people understand you need to have good regulations so that the, the minority out there who don't do the right thing are held to account. And we've significantly increased the fines and penalties uh, around these issues, um, both from a breeding point of view and from a pet ownership point of view. We have the same debate around the issue of uh, dangerous dogs and restricted breed dogs. Again, I think we've done more than any other government has ever done in this particular area because we believe that people have the right to feel safe in the streets from these sorts of dogs. Uh, are the dogs in these farms livestock or companion animals? Because they are being bred as companion animals. But Deb Tranter makes the accusation you're treating them as livestock. I, I wonder, in your eyes, Minister, which are they? Uh, so what we're making sure is that people that do run breeding establishments have clear rules uh, as to how they treat the animals from an animal welfare point of view and that those rules are enforced. Question on our SMS from Glenda it says, more than the previous government, uh, yeah, with exclamation mark, blinking is more than nothing. Has any puppy farm owner been charged in Victoria under the Cruelty Act? That's from Glenda. Do you know of any that have, Peter Walsh? Uh, yes, there has. For what sorts of things? Um, obviously for, for animal cruelty and not abiding by the code. So the, this, this code that's currently there has been there for quite a period of time. It, it hadn't been reviewed for, I think, something like a decade. Uh, we've actually bitten the bullet and done the work. Uh, had two you know, We had a round of consultation with everyone, which Deb, Deb had the opportunity to put a submission into. Came back and made some made some changes, and then have now put it out for the, under the legislation. There's a mandatory 28 day consult, public consultation, with, which it is out for now. People have till the 14th of August to put in any submissions to it. So if those people that are critical. Uh, all those people are supportive for it as well. We, I'd ask them to actually make sure they put submissions in by the 14th of August. All right. Uh, RSPCA is also quite critical of this draft card. It's not just Deb Tranter. RSPCA is a pretty big organisation and, and they look at this stuff carefully. Um, uh, have, have they got it wrong as well? Have they misunderstood what's in the draft? Well, the RSPCA has, has a point of view to put forward on a range of issues. Uh, they also uh, rehouse animals. Uh, they they have a particular view, but we have to, as a government, with any of these sorts of things, you have to take views from right across society. Uh, that's why it's out for the 28-day um, consultation period. All right. Uh, Minister, before you go, I, I believe you also have some thoughts on the, the referendum, which uh, appears to have been cancelled uh, at this stage, or at least put on hold indefinitely for the recognition of, uh, of local government. Are you happy with that? Well, it, it can't. As I understand it, it can't now be put to the people of Australia because it was geared around that 14th of September date. Uh, so because the Prime Minister has called an election a week early, that means it, it can't actually be put. Well, it can't be held on the 7th of September, but it can be held any time from the 14th and afterwards. Well, I think it would be a, um, would not be a good use of public money to go and have a referendum a week after you have a, have a general election. Uh, I, I don't think there was sufficient information put out to let people make an informed decision uh, that the words that were proposed to go in the Commonwealth Constitution were, were very broad and uh, we've made our view very clear that uh, there hasn't been an impediment to Commonwealth money going to local government in the past and I don't see how there's an impediment in the future by not having it in the Constitution and there's some legal issues from Victoria's point of view that local government constitutionally and legislative is under the responsibility of state government. And the last thing we want where you have an issue with a with a council that's got itself into some trouble and there's been 
councils dismissed in the past by state governments, that they actually appeal to the High Court on constitutional issues, and that gets bogged down for years, uh, being you know, both sides paying a fortune to mm. lawyers. Should the referendum just be abandoned? Well, it effectively has been. And you're happy with that? Well, I think given the fact that the Commonwealth had decided to spend a lot of money on the Yes campaign and no money on the No campaign, I think there was a, going to be a bias in the, in the, in the way people were being informed about what they're asking to support in a, in a referendum. Mm. I think it needs to go back to square one and start again, which is effectively what's going to happen. Minister, thanks for your time. Thanks, Dave. Minister for Agriculture in Victoria, Peter Walsh, uh, responding to uh, some of those claims from Deborah Tranter on the program last week. Mornings with Steve Martin on ABC Ballarat and South West Victoria. 18 minutes past nine is uh, is the time. I have a quick question before we move on to our next story, something you might like to answer on our SMS service, 0467842722. It was broken on Friday. It's all back up and running. Let's put it to the test. Given our interview with the Minister, do you think it's acceptable to use blunt force trauma to euthanise a dog in a puppy farm situation? Do you accept that that is an okay thing to do in this day and age. That seems to be one of the sticking points for animal activists, that you can go out where the dog has ended its commercial life effectively, is no more, uh, is not useful anymore for breeding puppies, that the owners of that dog can go out, whack it on the head with a hammer, and that that is acceptable. 0467 842 because the ministers confirmed that's in the code. I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. 19 minutes past nine on the morning show. Weather coming up after half past. We'll play the uh, the five question morning challenge as well on the program this morning.